I asked some Gran Turismo YouTubers to name their favourite glitches from the series, and then I aim to recreate them. I hope you enjoy the video. First up we have Dustin Eden, a racing game enthusiast who makes awesome videos about Gran Turismo, Forza and more. And he was nice enough to send me a message with his nomination, let's check it out. Hey Matt, thanks for reaching out. Truthfully there aren't many GT glitches I know of. The only big one that comes to mind is the Escudo wheelie glitch, coupled with the out of bounds on Seattle in GT3. I'm sure many other creators would probably nominate the same one. Ok, so just as we heard, Dustin submitted the glitch on Gran Turismo 3 whereby we break out of Seattle Circuit's boundaries, and then couple it with the famous wheelie glitch, so we can achieve almost unimaginable speeds. The first thing we need to do then is to take the Suzuki Escudo, which is probably the best car for wheeling and change the settings so that we can perform the second part of this glitch. Without going into too much detail, what we need to do is tune the car's downforce to create lift at the front end. The downforce will continuously push the car's front end up, while the game will try to force it down again. Eventually the car will tip so far back that none of its wheels will be actually touching the ground which means that the game considers it to be falling, not driving. That's why the speed increases as it does. Now that we've done that, let's head to Seattle. What we're going to do is drive down to the end of the main straight and then drive all the way back again. I'm not sure whether you can use either end of the straight, but I've seen other people online use the end that we're traveling towards to great effect. We need to be traveling at something like 300 kilometers per hour, or more in fact, and aim for the section where the tire barrier meets the arm cone. There is a small gap in the collision barrier at this spot on the circuit, meaning that we can get through it if we're precise enough. Let's see if we can do it. And we are through. From here you can actually explore the scenery and even get back onto the circuit if you want to. not what Dustin asked of us. Now we're out of bounds, there's nothing to stop the Escudo from stretching its legs. If you want to see how fast it can truly go, well, we'll get to that later in the video. Next up is Roffle Waffle, an up and coming Gran Turismo YouTuber who makes really in-depth videos about the series most loved cars, as well as memes and more. He and I have collaborated on a video before where we went over 50 facts about the original Gran Turismo. I'll leave a link to it in the video's description. This is another one from GT6 that I've seen but never actually done myself. Do you remember seeing videos of people winning races driving backwards? A lot of the time they used EVs, which isn't too surprising. But there were a handful of combustion engine cars that could do it as well with some trick gearing. I'm fairly certain that a Chaparral 2J isn't able to go 200 miles per hour plus in reverse in real life, so I'm pretty confident it can be considered a glitch. This infamous Gran Turismo 6 glitch has shades of the wheelie glitch about it, namely because it requires just a bit of tuning. The car we need is the Chaparral 2J, the legendary fan car. Now we're all set, we're going to head to Special Stage Route X. At first the car takes a while to get up to speed, so while it's doing that, I can tell you that I found a handy video for the setup required to do this glitch from a user named Mr. Smashboy 28 so I'll link to that video in the description. One thing that the setup requires in particular is a gearbox flip, which is where you lower the auto speed setting as low as possible, then raise the final drive as high as possible then raise the auto speed setting as high as possible, which will let you set the gears super low. Anyway, now that we've picked up some speed, you can see just how fast we can go in reverse. I managed to get to about 285 miles per hour, 
but I believe it's possible to take it a bit further. I've even seen people being able to negotiate the corners of Special Stage Route X while driving backwards at nearly 300 miles per hour too. So hats off to them for that. I then reached out to Nafantate. He makes videos about Gran Turismo 7, particularly videos that are designed to help you earn credits and what the best cars are to spend those credits on. Nafantate sent me a message to say that one of his favourite glitches occurred on Gran Turismo 2 on the lesser known circuit Motorsports Land. Out of bounds on Motorsports, mini track. I believe this really was as simple as turning around at the start and driving towards the edges of the track. And it does indeed occur on Motorsports Land. And it's a bit of a lesser known track as I say. It's because it was an arcade mode only track that you had to unlock. And then it was only playable in time trial mode. Motorsports Land itself is a go-karting track, which would make for a pretty cramped race with normal sized vehicles. Still, it is possible with cheat codes if you ever wanted to try it. Anyway, let's talk about the glitch itself. It's a bit of a strange one, in that you think the developers or testers would have caught it before the game was released, as it's quite easy to do. What we need to do is tour the circuit until we reach the final corner. Then we need to do some Super GTS corner cutting. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. And cut across the entire section of the grass here, getting as close to the tyre barrier as possible. This will rightly invalidate the lap time, but it also has a strange unintended secondary effect. It causes the level boundaries to disappear, so you can clip right through them and into the scenery. Like the Seattle glitch we saw earlier, we have several options for what we can do next. We can just admire the scenery of the circuit, or we can go off-piste and drive far away from the track itself. This too means that we can test the limits of any car in the game, since this glitch can be done with any vehicle too. And then we have Rowdy. His channel covers Let's Play series of the Gran Turismo games, as well as mods and gameplay tips. I reached out to Rowdy, and here's the glitch he submitted. Hey Matt, been subbed for a few years now, thanks for reaching out. While it's an unoriginal choice, I would have to go with the wheelie glitch from GT3, paired with the Seattle out of map glitch to reach the 32-bit integer limit. As you can see, this is pretty similar to Dustin's submission, the GT3 Seattle glitch which must be pretty memorable. But Rowdy mentioned something quite specific, the 32-bit integer, so I decided to split these parts of the Seattle and wheelie glitches into two parts of the same video. As we're about to get technical here, I got a definition of this bug from GT Fandom, so credit to them for what I'm about to say next. The significance of the number 21474836647 in computer programming is this. It is the largest signed integer value that can be displayed in a 32-bit register. If the number is exceeded, it will start to overflow into areas of memory, other registers, that are not supposed to be used to contain this value, which in turn causes erroneous effects buggy behaviour and eventually crashes the program. So what does this look like in Gran Turismo 3? Well, as the description from GT Fandom suggests, once we reach the number 21474836647 on the speedometer, will the game crash? Well, actually no, the game doesn't crash altogether, but your car does disappear from the screen, and all you can see is the tyre smoke but you can still pause the game and opt to exit, so you don't have to actually restart. Still, what an awesome thing to witness. Now, that would have brought us to the end of the video, but I'm aware that Dustin and Rowdy basically chose the same glitch, and I don't blame them, it is an awesome one. So I feel that it's only right to give you guys a bonus glitch, one that I would like to nominate myself. This glitch occurred on Gran Turismo 4 on arcade mode only, but what we need to do is add two cars to our favourites. In this case, I'm going to add one racing car and another car that is eligible for rallying. 
What we need to do is highlight the rally eligible car, then very quickly press right, then X. If done correctly, we'll actually be able to select the car that we shouldn't be able to select. The first thing we'll see is that we're presented with the colour options of the other car. So way more than we should have. We can even pick the secret black colours with this method too. But if we continue, we can see that we can now enter the rally race with the car that's really not supposed to be able to. With this method, you can essentially compete in a rally event with any car you like. If you check out the remainder of the colour schemes, sadly this won't present you with any previously unknown schemes for the car or anything like that. But we can see that they all share the same placeholder name, which is actually that of the BMW 120D04. Anyway, let's get out on track. The first thing that hit me was just how ridiculous it looks to have something like a Toyota GT1 driving on snow and ice. So you can imagine what something with even less ground clearance would look like such as the Chaparral 2J we saw earlier in the video. Now, while it is a pretty funny glitch, I was kind of hoping that there might be a practical use for it too. But I can't say that the GT1 handled at all well on the ice. Do you know of any useful cars and tracks for this glitch? Let me know in the comments. And there we have it! Several glitches nominated by some of my favourite Gran Turismo YouTubers. I hope you enjoyed them, and thanks for watching.